Welcome back everyone to Grand Tactician The Civil War. My apologies, it's been about a week since we've played this game. Uh, had an operating system crash and I had to reinstall Windows, which meant I had to reinstall uh, the game and then I had to uh, go in and manually kind of find all of my save game files and copy them over to the new install. So it took a little bit of time to have the, uh, the time available to make that happen, but we're ready to go. It's July 1863. It looks like the Union is once again moving on the Army of the Tennessee. We've been fighting a lot of battles here in Central Kentucky, um, and that's going to continue at least until I get these forts done. I've got to keep fighting them off until I can get these forts done, and then I can start moving. Uh, in the meantime, a lot going on elsewhere. We have consolidated our forces in and around Richmond. The Army of the Kanawha is there. The two corps of the Army of Northern Virginia are there. Uh, he is in the process, it looks like, of moving on Lynchburg uh, with his 3rd Corps, and I'd like to send the Army of the Kanawha out to deal with them at some point. I just can't right now. I don't know why this garrison is showing up as an army. Uh, we'll have to figure that out. The British do have two armies in Pennsylvania right now. The British Expeditionary Corps, 26,000 strong, headed toward Pittsburgh. And also the Army of Canada, 19,000 strong. Looks like they just fled from Philadelphia. They must have been in combat. And then we've got the French army somewhere over here in Texas. We don't really know for sure where they are, but they're in Texas somewhere. So they're headed toward the Western Theater. Let's see what happens today. Looks like we've won a naval victory over the Atlantic Blockading Squadron. I don't know if the British, I would guess the British were probably involved in that. Well, no, it's the James River Squadron, 57 guns. They were able to handle that. Riots in major cities. So that's just the draft riots uh, firing as happened historically in July. The Army of New York is in Florida, 12,000 strong. Wasn't expecting that. We're going to have to send somebody to go deal with that. But who is the question? But right now, we've got a bigger problem. We've got, <laughs> oh my gosh. We've got a Union Army of 173,000 men. Nearly 174,000 and 356 guns going up against our 105,000, 190 guns with some pretty low morale. The good news is that some of those armies aren't arriving for as long as, looks like about 60,000 men not arriving, for, well, actually 80,000 men not arriving for 18 to 24 hours. All of ours are there. So it depends on the time of day. We're going to have a little bit of time where we're going to have an advantage. All right, well, this is really the best news I could have hoped for. Uh, 7.30 in the morning, so that means we've got this whole first day. It's July, so we'll have a decent amount of daylight, too. Um, obviously, morale is a concern uh, with the armies being somewhat low in morale, uh, but we're going to move and move quickly to try and hit the enemy. We've got to win this battle on day one. Uh, before he gets that 80,000 reinforcements. Um, so I'm just going to push everybody as far up as I can, try to get him in position, and then just try to move everybody at once and, and figure out where the enemy is. I expect he's over here around Shady Grove Church. Well, on second thought, he's actually right here. That's even better news because that means we're going to be able to get right into the action. And because we can see at least where some of his men are, we're going to be able to deploy appropriately. Uh, now, he's in a really good position here because look at that strong defensive position. He's got this creek here. He's got fortifications there. So we're going to probably have to load up on this side and come at him. Um, it's going to be like Spotsylvania style, which um, the Battle of Spotsylvania, the Union, stacked. Rather than attacking on a wide front, they attacked on a very narrow front and stacked multiple rows and ju then just did like a hammer blow. That's kind of what we're going to have to do here. Uh, and then we'll come up with the Army of the Kanawha on this side. Oh, he's got fortifications there, though. He's got parapets. That's going to be rough. Okay, we're going to load everybody up right here, and we're just going to hammer right through that side right there. Uh, the numbers look like this at the moment. Based on our best estimate, he's got 82,000 men to our 107,000. He's He's, got, he's showing 350 guns, but I'm guessing he doesn't have that many right now. Um, I think those probably include everybody that he'll eventually have. Um, so we, we don't know where the rest of his men are. I guess, I guess the whole army is right in here. So 
Um, we're just going to try to start with what we see in front of us. I tried to put the divisions that have the uh, the best available morale up front to start. He's immediately shifting already. Oh yeah, there's a bunch of men back there too. Okay. Uh, so let's send, I don't know, like Pickett up here to, to guard this crossing. I'm going double lines with everybody too. Might want to send some Cav up here too. But I'm just going to push forward with as many brigades as I possibly can. And I've got all my artillery up here, hopefully in position to be able to open fire. Okay, so our lead brigades are getting into position. The first Armagh Irish. Willamette Guard are going to charge these guns, hopefully take them out. And we've actually got a perk available there. I'm going to give them deadly volley. No, don't. Why are you, why are you moving backwards? Stay right where you are. And he looks like he is. He's actually making a move down towards Pelham's army over here in the swamp. So we're going to have to get some kind of a defensive position going here. I'm going to tell Pelham to defend that position. We're just going to press with everything we've got. We've got to be super aggressive here. And now that he's abandoning these fortifications, we can move up over here. This is all artillery here. Let's move them into position. Not a great place for the Armagh Irish to be setting up, but we don't really have much choice there. Willamette Guard, Allegheny Raiders are getting into position. We're going to be bringing up the 18th Royal Irish Regiment on the right there. I'm going to give them Iron Discipline. I like to have a, a mix of perks available. Hungarian Impalers are back here. Along with the Carswell Crusaders, that's a uh, sexy division. Let's get all of them moved up. All right, let's move across with Anderson's division. He's only got 6,000 men. All right, what's going on here? Hopefully he gets this all figured out. So we're going to screen up here against any crossing he might try to make. another division in here but they're all kind of bun bundled up right now okay There's a lot of fire happening on the line here casualties are gonna be pretty heavy early on for me I mean they're, they're pretty even right now but we're launching a major attack so that's to be expected The goal here is that we're about to get on his flank because he pulled over here to meet this threat. I need Anderson to push forward as quickly as he can. This is all my replacement depot troops here, so I'm not fighting with them. I want to keep in the spirit of 
my rule that I'm only using patron units. Man, there's going to be a lot of casualties on these lead units. Armagh Irish, Allegheny Raiders, Royal Irish. Is that one of my commanders that's up front unnecessarily? No, oh, that's uh, actually just another unit there. Willamette Guard and the Royal Irish are actually overlapping a little bit. What I need is another unit out here on the flank. I do have Fry moving in that direction. All right, here we go. We're getting some more fire on the line now. Hamden, Sydney boys moving in along with the rest of Anderson's division. And then we're going to be able to turn his flank there. Here comes the attack from down here. I expected that. Let's get McCown up on the line. I'm just throwing a ton of units up into this position. We have to press this. It's only 8.15, so that's the good news. I'll pull the Willamette guard back. Oh, who was killed? Daniel Harvey Hill, D.H. Hill. Historically, he and Stonewall Jackson were married to sisters. So they were technically not related themselves, but they both married women in the same family so that were sisters to each other. Making sure my guns are firing. All right. About the same casualties on both sides. His morale is still higher than mine. I need you guys to double time it. Let's bring Ripley over here with these guns. Alright, now that we're on his flank, this should help. How are we doing here? Armand Irish have lost 500 men, but they're doing okay. Allegheny Raiders have lost 800 men. We're going to give them deadly volley. They may not hold for too much longer. Rural Ar Irish are uh, unstable. They haven't lost a lot of men, though. In the 88th Regiment of Foot, the Connacht Rangers are a little nervous, but we, we've got help getting here right now. This is going to help a lot. Okay, and now we've got men on the line. 42nd Regiment of Foot, the Black Watch. Third Special Forces are there. Got the Special Forces battery moving into position to help out. I need Anderson to get his division moving. All right, looks like uh, the 18th Royal Irish Regiment just broke. Morale was really low already in a lot of these units, so I shouldn't be that surprised. Let's make sure there's no surprises anywhere. Oh, yeah. I don't know what we're doing over here. I feel like he doesn't have a clue either. Come on, Pendleton, get your act together. This is what I get for having AI in command on this side. Okay, it's uh, 8.35. Now the casualties are mounting on his side. I expected that would happen once I was able to get in here on his flank. We just 
lost another unit breaking. That's okay. Plenty more where that came from. Eventually we're going to start breaking his. We should actually did just break one of his. Because now we've got his flank turned. This is where we've got to we got to destroy this entire pocket here. What's he doing? All right, Bartow, get up there. Help out. I should never have actually done this. AI, because it never works out the way I want it to. I say that every time, too. Who was wounded? Commander of the Willamette Guard. I need this whole division to press up here. Let's break them. McClaws, move your whole division forward. Man, a lot of casualties in some of these units. But we have to we have to break him before he gets his reinforcements, because it'll be done once that happens. Come on, Barto, get up here. Well, the guards losing men because they they broke and they they broke right in front of the enemy. All right, let's get the Hell Riders up here and firing on him. Man, D. H. Hill was killed in an action in which his brigade has only lost 35 men. It happens sometimes. My, uh, one of my ancestors was, um, he was with the 4th Pennsylvania Cavalry at Antietam. And they were barely engaged, had like hardly any casualties at all at Antietam. But one of their casualties was their commanding officer who was killed by an artillery shell. It was just one of those things that happens. There we go. And these guys are holding the enemy from coming down on us over here. The Black Watch is holding the center. Special Forces. I'm actually going to move 10 Special Forces up on the line as well. All right, Hamden, Sydney boys, let's get some fire into these flanks. We need to break every one of these units. Oh, what is going on over here? What are we doing? The good news is that his whole force, they've lost all cohesion because they're advancing through the swamp. Oh, we just lost another unit. The Allegheny Raiders broke. They lost almost 50% casualties. Well, we expected those lead brigades to take those kind of numbers, so I'm not entirely surprised by that. Blair doing on casualties. He's lost 1,400 men, so that tells me that with two fresh units that have hardly taken any casualties in front of him... Oh, boy, we just lost another one. Willamette Guard. Well, they lost their commander. I'm not surprised by that. But we're going to charge into this second brigade because I think they're probably about to break. See, he's got strong defensive positions here, too. I'm going to keep pressing this attack. All right, we got to break Blair. Come on. South Wales borders. Come on, baby. Let's do it. Broke him. Beautiful. Press the attack. We're going to break all of these units, and that should do it. He's still held up in this swamp. Oh, 
Uh, I guess they were already mounted up. Dismount, mount, dismount. It's kind of like uh, Major Reno at uh, Little Bighorn. He kept doing that. He would yell mount, and then dismount, and then mount. He kept giving conflicting orders. He was panicking. Oh, yeah, we're going to start seeing this break now. Beautiful. I mean, 17,000 casualties combined in two hours of fighting. That's how intense this has been. Now the Devil's Own Brigade. They're going to get into the action. They've got a sharpshooter perk, so if we sit back at a distance... Actually, there's a battery here that we need to deal with. Let's send the South Wales Borders up to deal with them. Actually, oh, is he going to charge in on us with his first calf against the Devil's Own? Interesting. All right, we're going to bring the Hell Riders down and try to hit this battery. I think this whole thing's about to collapse for him. Yep, it is. I'm just I'm starting to wonder now if all of these units breaking is going to be enough to win this thing. We've got him bunched up right there. He's he's finally starting to get across the swamp in a very bad condition. But because I I gave Pelham defensive orders he's really just not even doing anything over here at the moment but I don't think that's gonna matter let's charge into what's left of his line no 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 I didn't think he was supposed to arrive that soon the army of New England under McPherson he's lost 15,000 men to my 7700 Maybe that's just his army headquarters. Maybe it's not actually his men. That's quite possible. I just don't know if, we, if we've done enough to break him. And now I'm worried about what's going to happen over here with Pelham's army. to capture these guns. We're going to have to break a couple of these units too. That yeah, might be a harder ask. Let's see. Black Watch. Deadly Volley. They've lost a lot of men. There's more men coming down the road too. We need Pelham to somehow make a stand over here, and it's 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 not looking good at the moment. Oh, did he did he just issue retreat orders? I think he might have. It looks like everybody's backing off. Yeah, I think he's pulling out. Let's watch and see. Yep, they're pulling out too. Beautiful. Oh, timing was our friend on the re reinforcements on that one. We probably couldn't have gotten away with that. If he'd have had another 100,000 men. As we wait for him to complete his withdrawal, I'm looking at some of the numbers here. McClaw's division of the 2nd Corps, Allegheny Raiders, inflicted 2,100 casualties. Uh, Confederate Royal Division, the Black Watch. I think it was the Black Watch. Looks like. Um, it's hard to see because the, the names are too long and so they're overlapping a little bit. But uh, 2,900 victories for them. That's how many casualties they inflicted. And they were actually not on the front line of the attack. They were over here holding the center of his other attack. So he hasn't actually officially started his retreat yet, but he has been withdrawing troops. So we're, we keep getting, oh, his first core actually just arrived, but I don't think that's going to matter. 
There it is. 8,600 casualties out of our 107,000 men. We inflicted 20,000 on the Union Army. Beautiful. Much needed victory in Virginia. Hopefully we can get these guys to pull back. We still might face the other ones. The ones that never arrived, those reinforcements, they might still be moving in our direction, so they might still hit us. So there's our report on the commanders. Uh, Colonel Daniel Harvey Hill was killed in action. Colonel D.R. Jones uh, wounded in action. But the great news there, of course, is that we have repelled the immediate issue around Richmond. Though I fully expect we're going to still see a movement in our direction with additional forces. So we're going to constantly be fighting these guys off. In the meantime, here's the situation. National morale is pretty bad for both nations at the moment. National support's better for his. So we need to look at any possible um, policies that might raise national support at this point. Morale of the army is slightly higher for his than it is for mine. Um, we just got to keep inflicting casualties. We've inflicted 200,000 casualties now to our 135. Uh, but we've got those European support armies coming in. So that's going to be very helpful, uh, especially once the French get that army uh, in toward the, the Western theater. I think that's going to really open up things. It's going to cause him to have to pull some of these armies back in a westerly direction. But I think we're about to engage again here with the Army of Tennessee. But I'm going to wrap it up right there. I know that was a short episode, but I wanted to make sure I got some content out to you guys today. Uh, We'll definitely continue at it as quickly as we possibly can. The French Expeditionary Corps, as of July 14th, was still uh, between San Antonio and Austin. They've got a long, long way to go. Uh, I would guess a couple of months before we see them in the Western Theater. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.